What's going on guys? Welcome to the Ask Phoebe's YouTube channel, the information source on all things zero chain. My name is Derek Fiebiger. I launched a cryptocurrency hedge fund in 2018 called Arturo Capital, and I currently sit as director of operations for zero chain. Zero chain is an ambitious blockchain project focusing on decentralizing data storage and tokenizing the value of that storage through a crypto asset called ZCN. On this week's episode of the Zero Chain Minute, we have a special guest and potentially co-host if we're able to fit this into his busy schedule, Mo Siam. Mo is a key advisor for Zero Chain. During the day, he's on the advisory and executive board of several companies covering various industries. On the side, he's a bit of a tech nerd like most of us. He's made strategic early investments in promising blockchain technologies, and he's helped Suswata immensely with ironing out the Zero Chain tokenomics protocol. Some good stuff going on in Zero Chain world this week. We released a sneak preview of the new econ paper in Telegram. We were featured on the Oracle blog, and our enterprise D storage app is near ready for trial on the Oracle marketplace. I'll include all the links to this in the video info below. We're also closing in on Betanet, so I'm getting pretty pumped up. Today, we're going to do a deep dive on token value and mining rewards led by Mo. It's important to note I've broken this up into several parts. The first segment will be block production. The second segment will be token distribution. The third segment will be inflation model. The fourth segment will be token value, and the fifth segment will be rewards. So we'll start with, uh, obviously, the first segment, and uh, enjoy. Mo, how's it going? Hey, dude, how are you? How's it going? Not bad. Uh, glad to be on the on the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, so yeah, we've been contemplating doing this for a while, and uh, we finally got it on schedule. So uh, uh, yeah, interesting stuff is happening with zero chain as well, as you said, as we're approaching beta net. Uh, protocol and code updates are very very active and on GitHub. So uh, you know. I mentioned probably on Telegram that you know uh, it's going about two two days on average, uh, and you get an update on the uh, on the GitHub uh, repo repositories. So that's interesting activity on on the code side. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about the uh, inflation, the economics, etc. And uh, SAS uh, has revealed and updated the white paper uh, accordingly. And what I'd like to do today is actually explore. What the you know what does that information mean uh, in the grand scope of things? How would the uh, zero chain inflation look? How would the rewards look? What are uh, the different faucets that are contributing to inflation? And hopefully establish a model or a logic uh, you know on how to value the token. So uh, there has been a study that has been uh, by the London School of Economics. I, I was involved in that study with Andreas and the team uh, and SAS. And he, it's a very good study. Um, so that was back in, uh, I think, August 2019 when the study was, was done. Uh, since then, uh, I mean, there are, you know, there are different models. I mean, even if you look at Bitcoin, there is the... Um, the stock to flow model that has come recently. There is the uh, quantitative theory of money that has been used before for various currencies. But in zero chain, uh, you know, or in zero chain, similar to any other uh, blockchain, I think um, a different way of thinking might be uh, might be beneficial to realize what the token value is. So uh, it's another model. Uh, hopefully this one is uh, the logic to drive the math instead of the math driving the logic. So um, let's start with um, with a bit of background and let me share some uh, share my screen here and uh, feel free to ask me any question. 
uh, for the benefit of the viewer or uh, for yourself, or if anything is unclear, um, it's an interactive session. So uh, that's the way it would like it to be. So let me let me see if uh, I can get my screen my screen here. Um, do you see this? I see it crystal clear. All right. And just in advance, we're 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 both on different sides of the world. So if if there's any lag issues. We apologize, but uh, we're doing this live, so no edits, no second chances here. <laughs> well, hopefully it will go smoothly. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, an early version of uh, this Excel model uh, has uh, I've recorded it and, uh, you know, I've asked people to share it on Telegram. So since then, a bit of an update has happened. Not a major one. It's still... Uh, Still, some additions are coming to it, but in its current state, hopefully it will uh, clarify a lot of things. So, uh, zero chain, um, as any blockchain, ha they have their own blockchain and they have their own consensus protocol. Their consensus protocol uh, is actually uh, an interesting protocol. If you look at other blockchains, Ethereum, etc., typically what you'd find is a node is uh, responsible for producing the block, for validating transactions, and for storing the block. Uh, in zero chain, uh, this load has been uh, segmented so uh, into three different uh, activities. So sharders will be storing the block and miners will be producing the block and validators, you know, uh, uh, validating the transactions. And uh, m miners and sharders uh, do share, uh, as far as I, uh, per the recent update, it is an equal share between the miners who are producing the blocks and the sharders. A small percentage goes to validators, etc. But I would you know, divert the reader to focus on, to read the white paper and the technical papers to see how the relationship on the reward split, uh, you know, how the reward split goes. How That said, what is clear from the papers is uh, on each block production, 0 0.7 uh, tokens are minted as a reward. Okay. And blocks are produced by miners who are chosen from an active set. An active set about has about 100 miners, and those 100 miners are shuffled, okay? Uh, not, the, not the 100 sets, so you have 100 miners from A to Z, let's say, um, uh, figuratively speaking, and you're picking and choosing from those 100 miners uh, through, for each block production. So using a, a VRF, you're choosing a subset of the active set to produce the blocks. Now, the active set itself is shuffled by a view change, all right, which is a different mechanism, of course, from the VRF. And to be eligible for uh, the active set to begin with, you'd have to stake tokens. And the uh, selection into the active set goes with the square of your stake. So, uh, you know, the more you stake, the better yeah, chances you have getting into that active set and of course subsequently being selected by the VRF to be producing blocks um, uh, can I chime in here for one second sure. Sure. Um, I, I, I want to give a refresher to everyone on, on what view change is and what active set is uh, Mo, Mo you did a good job giving a giving good overview um, but I, I, I want to put it into layman's terms. Um, so it's important to understand these terms really well in order to understand how being a zero chain miner or a sharder will work. So um, in order to know what these concepts are, um, it, 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 or if you already know what they are, you can skip forward maybe like a minute or so. I'll explain this. But um, so let's first define the active set. The active set is the group that mines shards blocks. So mines or shards the blocks. Somewhat like Bitcoin, these miners and sharders are the nodes or the individuals running the proper hardware and software to participate in validating transactions, plus keeping the block history up to date. And most importantly, what you care about is they're paid for their work. Um, so now, view change what's view change well 
getting paid sounds nice and you probably want in on that if you can if you can get in on that so how do you join it well that's where view change comes in to be in the active set you in essence join a decentralized lottery think of the view change as the lottery uh, to win the lottery you need a lottery ticket so what's your lottery ticket well you submit its transaction like mo was talking about called a staking transaction and this transaction is your lottery ticket now kind of like when there's a, a massive billion dollar pot in the powerball you might want better odds at winning it by having more lottery tickets so to increase your odds in view change you put up more zcn stake so we call this concept squared staking which simply means the more stake you have the better odds your the better your odds will be of getting selected in the view change lottery view change has several rounds which we'll get into later but the the important thing to know is if you don't get picked in a view change round you merely need to wait until the next next round which will likely only be a couple days or weeks between each round um, so that's 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 uh, kind of like the, the the overview on those things right so yeah, so the view change shuffles, as you said, uh, you know, or you know, allows people to enter the active set. Uh, as for block block production, not everyone in the active set at a given a time is producing a block. Otherwise, you, they would all, you know, if you the idea is to shuffle them so that uh, you're protecting against protected against uh, DOS DDoS attacks. But anyways. Uh, on the square staking, interestingly, uh, it's a it's a very clever mechanism because uh, it also protects us against uh, Sybil attacks. So, suppose someone has uh, quite a bit of tokens, and he wants he is a malicious actor. Uh, if he chooses to distribute those tokens equally uh, and join as uh, different minor entities, his chances of being selected in the active set is uh, so much is drastically reduced as opposed if he lumps all his tokens into one entity and uh, joins the active set so and if and by na by the essence of it once he has lumped it he is one entity instead of being for example 10 entities previously so civil attacks are uh, negated if you will by the square staking uh, requirement so uh, there's a there's a few clever uh, introductions into how the consensus all goes, but you know that's a different read. Maybe a different. We can go in that detail in a in a different episode. Uh, we want to focus on what the numbers mean from an inflation perspective and the rewards. So, as you said, miners, shorters, etc. Once a block is produced. Uh, we get 0 0.7 uh, tokens minted. Uh, there's about 15 million blocks produced in a year. And each 15 million blocks, once they're produced, the reward goes down by 10%. So 0 0.7 becomes uh, 0 0.63. The next 15 million, it goes by 10% on the 0 0.63. And the 15 million blocks are expected to take uh, one year. So uh, you're producing a block every two seconds. Okay, so um, so we started this model, of course, assuming that we start on the top of year 2021 uh, for simplicity. So year one is first of Jan 2021. So uh, rewards is 0 0.7 uh, per block. Block time is uh, two seconds. So you would expect around 11 million tokens to be minted as rewards uh, in the first year, then about 10 million, then 9 million, then 8 million, then 7 million, and so on and so forth. And that will be contributing to, uh, to inflation. Now, in addition to this reward, anyone that st stakes or locks tokens, right, gets... Uh, uh, an interest reward, okay, which is 7% in the first year, and it falls, uh, the first year being defined as 15 million blocks, and it falls down by 10%, so your 7% will be 6.3% every 15 million blocks or so 
uh, going forward. Okay? So you have the inflation coming from the block production, and you have inflate, which is what we're discussing here on the screen. And there is something else that is the staking and locking also allows for uh, interest rewards, which is not taken in this stream. We'll come to this later. But uh, I just wanted to intro, you know, give you an idea about this. Now, there are some uh, information here that I chose to uh, not show on this slide. I'll come back to it, uh, hopefully towards the end of this uh, this talk, but Derek, here's a question for you. You're, uh, I, I believe you're a fan of Tezos and uh, similar protocols. What would you think is a fair yield, right, for people to stake? So Tezos, I think, is right now at six percent. Uh, do you think that is a fair, you know, you know, and I think it was a bit higher before that. At what yield would you think staking and uh, uh, would be would not be interesting. Would not be interesting. Um, that's, yeah, that's a good question. If, are we just kind of like saying maybe just we have identical consensus protocols and without any differences other than inflation, I'd probably say um, maybe around anything below 5% or so. I might begin to to lose interest relative to you know all the other protocols that, that their inflation rates and, um, and 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 other factors considered too. Well, I'm I'm glad you said that. So the the idea is about five percent uh, nowadays. So um, anything below it, people will start uh, thinking twice about staking, but. So if you're staking about a million tokens, you'd need a 5% in, in tokens, uh, 50,000 tokens. So with that in mind, we'll come, we'll come to it later, uh, I promise. We need to, we'll move on right now to try to establish the full picture and come back to this yield uh, issue later on, okay? So again, from the mining activity, from the block production, you should expect about 11, on the first 15 million blocks, about what in the first year or so, 10, 9, 8, 7, and so on and so forth. Okay, so, and that, I mean, do you have any questions here, Derek, that you'd like um, to? I think some people okay. might be a little curious on, you know, if, if we have um, 11 million inflation, um, there might be some questions on in the, in the top right corner, you have the a zero for, for mining inflation. Um, so I don't know, maybe you, uh, what I meant is, you know, that it is, uh, the, what is the mining inflation here as in the difference between the first year and the second year. So, this so is that's the gap. Some, some so people might be thinking the inflation that those inflation tokens are coming from, from somewhere else or? No, they, well, if you look at this figure, it's exactly matching this figure, right? So yep. what I'm saying is the addition from year one to year two is, is 10 million. Maybe this is, you know, um, a bit confusing, the last column. Uh, if you look here, it's just 11 in the first year. So you need you need a base. So what is your base? Uh, 11, right? So there's no, there's no, there's no change on that 11. Yep. So on the next year, what you're having is the cumulative minted is 20 million. So from the previous year, I, what I'm saying is we've increased by 10 million. That's all I'm saying. So yep. this is year one. And this is the increase from year to, from one year to the next. Right. Yep. Which is if you look at this, this is actually matching this. So um, you know, it's a redundant column, but uh, it serves another purpose. So I'll come to the percentages in terms of the total supply later on uh, towards the end of the uh, end of the uh, of the talk because that will also feed into the yield. We have to introduce uh, other concept which is uh, the locking and staking inflation to come up with how much is circulating at the end of the year so that we can know uh, how much is the total inflation, right? Because the uh, there is inflation that is coming from other faucets as well. So this is not the only inflation that is being introduced. So the 11 million and nine and 10 million, etc. Uh, if I'm if people are staking, you know, you'd have to take into account that people are staking 
to become into the active set, to, to go into the active set, right? As you mentioned earlier. So once they stake, they also take the interest rewards, which is different from what is from the block production rewards. Is that clear? Yep. I lost you, I think. Nope, I'm here. Sorry, I, uh, I shut the webcam right. down. All right, no worries. So, yeah, so these rewards are different from the locking and staking interest rewards. So this is part of the inflation, not the full inflation. And uh, we'll come to it in terms of supply, etc. Uh, later on. 